I'll tell you, one of my favourite things in the world is old vintage synthesizers. So I thought I'd make a little video just to show what they do and how they work. I've got one or two here. Um, we'll start off with this one. This is the ARP Odyssey. Lovely toy, is that one? Lovely, lovely toy. Just sitting above the ARP Odyssey here is the classic Korg MS-20. I've got this one rigged up just to give us a bit of a rhythm, you know, just a bit of fun, okay? So while that's grooving away, we'll show you this. That's uh, the Moog Voyager, a uh, bit of a more modern machine is the Moog Voyager. I say Moog, you're not meant to say Moog, apparently it's Moog, but I've been calling them Moogs for 40 years, so if you're a Moog enthusiast, if you're a Moog enthusiast, sorry about that. And finally, this little baby is the one I'm going to be talking about most, it's the Moog Prodigy. Lovely, lovely, lovely little machine. The thing about this machine, it's simple, but what it does, it does it really well. So we'll have a good look at this right now. First of all, I'll turn this thing off. <laughs> Any synthesizer has to have three main bits. This little Moog Prodigy has got them nicely laid out here. It's got the oscillator there. It's got filter. That's like a fancy tone control. And it has a clever volume control. I'll show you what these two bits do in a minute. But first of all, the oscillator is the bit that makes the noise. And to make it clear what's going on, I'm going to show you a machine that actually has an oscillator separate to everything else. So I'll just pull this wire out. <laughs> Such a professional. Hey, this thing, it's a ring modulator. It's probably the most peculiar thing that you can do with music. To give you an idea how strange it is, this is what they use to make the Dalek voices on Doctor Who. Beautiful thing. Unfortunately, I haven't got time to show you what the ring modulator uh, does in this video. I might do a separate video one day. Who knows? Crazy times. But what I can show you is it's got a built-in oscillator. It's got its own little oscillator. No keyboard or anything, just an oscillator. If I put this in, you can hear it, yeah? If I turn this little knob, we can make it lower or higher. Now this oscillator is a voltage controlled oscillator. Everything on the synthesizer is voltage controlled. Uh, in this case, if I put in a low voltage, I get a low note. And if I turn it up, I get a high note. Now the trick of voltage control is you can do so many different things with it. At the moment, that's just a straight voltage going in. But if I turn this up, the control voltage is wobbling. And that's why we get this nice tremolo effect. I can switch it. That's now a square wave modulation, so the note goes up, down, up, down, up, down, like that, okay? Uh, this little machine itself can't do a massive range of control voltages, but I've got something that can. This is great. Stop doing that for a minute. This is a, it's a 251, it's called. Isn't it pretty? Isn't that just lovely? You can't actually use this as an effects pedal, it's got all these lovely sockets and things, but you can't plug a guitar in or anything like that. It's not a phaser or a flanger. What it does do, it kicks out weird control voltages. That's its only job. So I'm just going to plug that into here. There we go. Right now, this thing is kicking out a random voltage and that's why it's hopping all over the place. Uh, I don't know if you can see the buttons here. If I turn that one down a bit, put that one up. That's making it all wobble around a little bit. Or what I can do, I'm mixing in a, uh, I'm mixing in a falling square wave here. Yep. Put a bit of echo on that. It's beautiful. Then add a bit of tremolo. <laughs> As you can see, the fun. Hello. <laughs> the fun never stops. Quiet. <laughs> okay, so far so good. But the one thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't heard a tune. <laughs> Have you noticed? Oh, and the other thing is, the sound is always coming out. It's not turning on and off. Nothing starts or finishes. Even though we're doing all those fancy little bits, the oscillator, you could hear it all the time. So what we need is something that puts a precise voltage into the oscillator and at the same time it will turn the sound on and off. We've got such a thing as it's over here. <laughs> here 
here we go. It's the keyboard. Keyboard does two completely different, but two very important jobs. The first thing is, when I push the note down, it comes on. When I take my finger off, it goes off. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But effectively, treat it like a doorbell. The other thing is, each key, uh, the way it's worked out, it's like a very, very, very fancy uh, frequency knob, but each key represents a different position on the knob. It's very, very carefully calibrated so that you get exactly the right voltage to play notes. That's, a, that's the right voltage for a note of C. That's an F. I think this is tuned, anyway. <laughs> one thing you notice, I can't play two notes at once on here. There's only one oscillator working at the moment. And uh, so I can only play one note at a time. If I push a note down, if I push another note, it usually always plays the lowest note that you're pushing. So if I push two notes, that's making no difference up there, you see. You just play the lowest one. What that means is you can do really neat little trills. There's other ways of controlling the control voltage that goes into the oscillator as well. But let me just show you close up. Here we go. This is the oscillator section of the Prodigy here. In fact, the Prodigy's got two oscillators. I'll explain why we have two in a second. But let's just look at the first one here. Here's the uh, keyboard putting the control voltage and we're getting a tune out of the oscillator. First switch here is this one. This one is the octave switch, and what it does, it adds exactly one volt to whatever's coming off the keyboard. So every time you add an extra volt, the note jumps up by an octave, okay? So that's the octave switch. This one here, this is a tuning switch. Just moves the whole voltage up and down slightly, yeah? Because these things are notorious for going out of tune, so that's quite an important thing to set it up before you start. This one down here is called the pitch wheel. You'd use this during a show. It does the same job as that. But what's good about this is it locks in the middle, so once you've done something fancy, you know exactly what note you've got to in the middle. Yep. <laughs> right, that's oscillator number one. This is the waveform switch. At the moment, if you look at that little diagram, this is sending out what's called a pulse wave. But the oscillator can actually make different noises. I'm going to make this a little bit higher. If I put it to the middle, that's a triangle wave. Much, much softer. And if I put it at this end, that's a sawtooth wave. Put it down there. The uh, triangle wave in the middle is a fundamental frequency. It's only basically the very, very lowest harmonic. Okay, it's like a low note, if you like. When you click onto the sawtooth wave, that low note is still playing, but also all the harmonics above it are playing as well. It's like playing lots and lots of different octaves at once. Then when you click to the pulse wave, that's not all the harmonics, it's just some of the harmonics are playing. So you get a slightly different tone, and that matters a lot more when you start to play with the filter anyway. So that's oscillator one. Oscillator two, this is a little volume control section, so that's oscillator one turned up there. Here comes oscillator two. Oscillator 2 is almost identical to Oscillator 1. The only thing that makes it um, different is that instead of having this switch here, which I'll explain in a minute, this has got an interval switch. You can detune this oscillator against that one. But if you put them in unison, you get a really powerful lead sound. Isn't that nice, that? Well, you can make a sort of fifth or a third. This is uh, a different range of octaves. It goes very high, this one. Okay, so that's the second oscillator, and it has a different set of waveforms, funnily enough. Uh, if you have a look here, it's got the sawtooth. Uh, 
it's got the triangle, but this one isn't a pulse, this one's a square. That's a nice sound, and if we, when we play with the filter, you can get nice clarinet and woodwind sounds using a square wave. If you listen to the pulse wave, it's a little bit nitty, a little bit, sounds more like a wasp stuck in a drain pipe, does that pulse wave, listen. Before we leave the oscillators, there's two things to show you. One is this, it's the glide control. The glide control is so cool. You can't do this on any other sort of keyboard. It really has to be a vintage synth. Basically, you get to slide between the notes. So you can start off doing a great big tune with a really fancy start. Set that up. It really helps you slide around and do some really nice musical tricks. That's the glide control. But the other thing, the best thing for me that the Moog does is this. It's the sync switch. What this does, it locks one oscillator into the other one. And it has the effect of creating some amazing, amazing sounds. Let's see if we can get this to work. By changing the uh, frequencies between the oscillators, they react differently and they kick up a massive bag of harmonics. I'll tell you a secret. Underneath here, look at this. It's a Nord stage keyboard. It is just the best keyboard ever made. I love the vintage synth. This thing is genius. It does everything, <laughs> but it can't do this. <laughs> Sorry, Nord. So good, but not quite. <laughs> We're just going to have a look now at the thing that controls the volume on the Moog Prodigy. To be technical, it's a voltage-controlled amplifier being worked by an envelope shaper, but don't let that give you nightmares. Have a look at the buttons here. At the moment, it's set up so if I push a key down, it comes on, and I take it off, it goes off, yeah? Now, here it says attack. At the moment, the attack is on its shortest level. If I turn the attack up, it fades in. I can make that really slow. Okay. That's quite nice if you're doing string sort of sounds, like a violin bowing, you see. OK, I like to keep the attack sharp anyway. This one is the release. If I turn this up a bit, the note doesn't just come straight off, it dies away. A bit like a piano when you've got the loud pedal down, yeah? This one shows how loud the note is while you're holding the key down. This is sustain. In fact, if I turn this down to about there, put that there, listen. What happens is when I play the note, it goes up to its maximum volume, then drops down to what's quite a low volume now. And when I take my finger away, it goes away. In fact, if I turn down the sustain to nothing, you get very, very short little notes, OK? Now, there's two sets of controls on this machine that look like this. These are the ones for the volume. These ones are identical, but these ones control the filter. That's a filter. Basically, it's a fancy uh, tone control, but it does so much more, okay? Uh, there's two things on the filter. The first is what's called the cutoff frequency. What's the, this is actually a low pass filter. It means it always lets the lower frequencies through, but it filters out the high frequencies. This is what it sounds like with all the high frequencies there. And then when I start cutting them out, just leaves you with the low frequencies, yeah? So that's the cutoff frequency, but the other thing is the emphasis. Uh, <laughs> this is emphasis, resonance, it's got all sorts of different names as this. I'll show you what it does. That's for the emphasis turned right up. with no emphasis at all.
and that's filled it up again yeah the emphasis as it's as, it, as it's cutting off the high frequencies the actual highest frequencies that are still left playing it gives it a bit of a boost i don't want to sit in here drawing graphs and stuff you can tell what it does listen it makes it into a wow wow pedal that's what i'm trying to say i talk too much the filter frequency is also voltage controlled so when i push a key down these controls make the uh, synthesizer louder and quieter these controls actually raise and lower the cutoff frequency what i'm going to do here is uh, if i put that there put that there What this machine doing now is that although the volume is staying high as i play the note the uh, filter closes early so it's sort of a <laughs> this little button here just shows you how much how much of the uh, voltage control goes into the filter there there's none but you can't even hear that can you <laughs> nothing happening there once i do that it's now putting all this envelope voltage into the filter. This is how you start to get some of the groovy percussive effects, yeah? So that's the filter and that's the amplifier. Between the two of them, if you get that balance right, you can start doing impressions of loads of other instruments. And I'll show you a couple in a minute. But while we're looking at the whole box here, there's one more thing to show you, and that's the low frequency oscillator, okay? Let me click that off, click that on. These two things down here are called performance controls, because when you're playing away, you wouldn't usually play with those that much, but these ones you would. And what this one does, <laughs> This one brings in a bit of vibrato. Can have it slow if you want. Or fast. What this thing is, it's what's called a low frequency oscillator. You can't hear it, but it makes a control voltage that goes up and down, you know, fairly slowly. Then that mixes in with everything else. Then if I add a bit of that control voltage to the oscillator, you get this vibrato. If I want, I can make it a square wave. And if I don't want it to go into the oscillator, I can put it into the filter. What's quite cheeky is if you get this right, you can make it sound like you've actually got an echo chamber. <laughs> That's not actually an echo chamber at all. All it is is as the uh, sound is dying away, it's making the filter open and close. <laughs> Look at this, it's the instruction book that comes with the Prodigy, and I have to say, I think this actual book is worth nearly as much as Little Synth itself. I don't know how many of these have survived, but it's brilliant, because even though it's just two oscillators, a filter, a voltage controlled amp, and a low frequency oscillator, it's all there is. There's all these different patches here. Can you see it shows you how to set all the buttons and knobs and everything. And all these little patches show you how to make a whole range of different sounds. So to finish up this little video, I'm going to show you uh, four of the little instruments that it can do. The thing is about this, though, you've got to set them up by hand every time. This nice machine here, this is the modern, uh, modern Voyager. And everything, the computer remembers what it's got to do. Okay, so in other words, if you're playing live, that machine's brilliant. You just push a button, got the sound you want with this thing. Every time you turn it on, the beauty of it is you're never quite sure what you're going to get next.
<laughs> I think out of all the sounds this thing can do, tuba has to be my favourite. It's certainly the funniest. Anyway, that's the end of my video. I've gone into an awful lot of detail, but I don't make any apologies about that because there's young people today who will only ever see digital keyboards where you push a button, you get a noise, or it's all samples. This really, really shows you the nitty gritty, okay? I hope you see that. I hope you loved it. Thanks ever so much for your attention. From me and from the Mood Prodigy. Bye bye.